Okay, I'm going to call the meeting to order. Yes, so please stand for the pledge to the flag. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Well, welcome everyone to the uh, regular town board meeting. We have approval of minutes, October 11, 2016, regular meeting, October 13, 2016, special meeting. Is there a motion on the minutes? So moved. Second. Second. Discussion? Roll call? Mr. Russell? Yes. Mr. McGinnis? Yes. Ms. Bunt? Yes. Mr. Summerfield? Yes. Mr. Randazzo? Yes. Motion is carried. Public comment, agenda items. Anyone wish to speak on any item on the agenda? Okay. And none? First time we have is the uh, Boy Scouts. Uh, you have Chris Neighbors here this evening, I believe, with a couple of scouts. Yep. Correct, Chris? And uh, Chris is the uh, Merit Badge Counselor, and they're working on citizenship in the community. So you want to just give us the name of the scouts and welcome you to uh, be here? Uh, Julian and Alex. Uh, I've got one missing. Um, okay. The biggest thing we want to see is an argument. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully you won't see that tonight. <laughs> no, the, 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 uh, the main requirement that they're working on uh, is they need to see how, how a decision is made in two sides of, of uh, a point of view. Sure. Um, other than that, they're, they're also interested in, uh, in you know, possibly understanding some uh, any funding issues. They're, they're supposed to figure out uh, how things get paid for in town. Uh, they'll be doing independent research on that, but they'll be looking for those points. Um, and uh, they are also uh, trying to understand what the uh, what the actual structure of, of the board is. Okay. Well, we welcome you. I'm the town supervisor, and have four council members here, all elected by the uh, by the voters. And uh, basically, it's our responsibility to oversee town government run the day-to-day -day operations, oversee the uh, taxpayers' money, and provide services. So this is our regular monthly meeting where we take action on items that are before the board. Last Monday was our, the first Monday of each month is our work session where the board actually just discusses issues that are before us and just have a sort of a freewheeling uh, discussion as we move through the agenda and all. So we welcome you, and I, I'm sure you'll see, you know, a little bit of government in action tonight. So welcome. I think if we're doing our job right, it's a discussion, not an argument. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> That's true. <clears throat> okay, first, the next item is uh, on the 2017 budget uh, to adopt it. I do have two items that I'd like to put before the board um, to uh, sort of amend the, uh, the budget that was presented to the, at the hearing. And the one item is uh, tonight we're going to act on purchasing a uh, highway department truck from the village of Harriman. And in order to do that and be able to pay for it, uh, I'm going to ask the board to uh, amend the uh, budget to reflect uh, the following, that uh, the, in the, the DA, which is for highway equipment, we had planned on rolling over unexpended funds of $15,000 into the 2017 budget. But we have the opportunity to buy the uh, used uh, highway truck from Harriman. So what I'm proposing to the board is that we reduce the uh, fund balance that's appropriated for the 2017 budget from $15,000 to $5,000. And that $10,000 would go towards the purchase of the truck as well as $10,000 that is in the unappropriated fund. The second item that I'd like to uh, have the board consider is on the economic development budget line. Uh, we are going to uh, hopefully have an active uh, economic development advisory committee, and I'd like to appropriate $3,000 on that budget line, just as any seed money, if there are any expenses that would come up for it, or if there's anything <laughs> that the town would want to do in terms of uh, promoting economic development. It's a small amount, but it's, a, it's something in the line that we would be able to use for the uh, for the purpose of economic development. So I would like to increase uh, that line from zero, it's A6989.4, to $3,000, and offset that with uh, the uh, programs for the age review, A4772, uh, increase that amount on a revenue side from 20,000 to 23,000 to help cover the uh, 
to $3,000. Now, on the DA part, where we're reducing the unfunded balance uh, rollover for next year, what that will do is uh, it'll increase the tax levy by that $10,000. So instead of being what we estimate to be $20,320 under the cap, if the board approves that uh, amendment, then we're hoping to be the $10,320 $320 under the cap. So the buffer is only $320? Pardon? $10,320 below. So I read the resolution, whereas heretofore the town of Cornwall provided a preliminary 2017 town budget and scheduled public hearings for the town board members and interested citizens to review, and whereas after the town board reviewed all the comments and suggestions and made the necessary changes, the board members are now going <coughs> to present the final 2017 budget. Now therefore be resolved as follows, that the town board does hereby adopt the 2017 budget as amended and presented at this meeting. So. I guess we'll include the, the amendments as part of this resolution, Steve. That's right. That's why it says amended. Be it further resolved, the town clerk is directed to prepare two certified copies of the budget for the supervisor to present to the county in order for the county to levy the town taxes and other charges contained in the town budget. Is there a motion on the resolution? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Discussion? For the uh, EBAC expenses, they'll have to submit and they'll have to be pre approved before they're paid out? Yes. It would be. It would be uh, they wouldn't have authorization to spend on that line. It would be they'd have to present it to be uh, to be approved for any expenditure. The three thousand dollars you're talking about. That's yeah. We yeah. did have that at one other time. Yeah, Years we actually we had, right. we had five thousand at one time, and so. But it's a little something just to you know have something in the line that we can we can work with. So it's moved. Second discussion. Roll call. Mr. Russell. Yes. Mr. McGinnis. Yes. Ms. Bunn. Yes. Mr. Summerfield. Yes. Mr. Randazzo. Yes. The motion is carried. At our work session last uh, week, we uh, met with Russ Budd, who's been a consultant for us on various projects. And the board discussed uh, beginning a uh, an update of our comprehensive plan, which has become a crucial document in uh, in local government and. Uh, one of the things that Russ had recommended was that we apply for a Hudson Valley a Greenway grant to uh, hopefully get a grant that will offset some of the costs of the update of the comprehensive plan. Um, the goal, obviously, it'll have been almost five years since we did it last time, and the goal is to really keep the plan current and reflect a vision of the community, um, as well as what we're hoping to do with this update is to really put the uh, comprehensive plan in a, in a format that's much easier to read, much more user-friendly than what we have been uh, been working with. So I have a resolution, uh, whereas the town of Cornwall maintains a comprehensive plan that was last updated in 2011, the town board's approval of the comprehensive plan update being made in early 2012, whereas the town board wishes to undertake a new update to the town's comprehensive plan in 2017, whereas a grant for the town's comprehensive plan update project is available through the Hudson River Valley Greenway under the Greenway Communities Grant Program, whereas the application for the said grant requires the applicant municipality to obtain the approval and endorsement of the governing body of the municipality in which the project will be located. And therefore, be it resolved as follows. One, that the town board as the governing board of the town of Cornwall hereby approves and endorses the application for a grant under the Greenway Communities Grant Program for a project located within this community known as the Town of Cornwall Comprehensive Plan Update. And two, that the town board authorizes Russell Budd to prepare a said application as a volunteer at no cost to the town and authorize the town supervisor to execute any documents necessary for submission of the application for the grant. Is there a motion on the resolution? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Discussion? Roll call. Mr. Russell? Yes. Mr. McGinnis? Yes. Ms. Bunt? Yes. Mr. Summerfield? Mm -hmm. Yes. Mr. Randazzo? Yes. Motion is carried. ADC road dedication. This is development off of Route 32 in Firthcliffe Heights. The developer is uh, proposing to turn this roads and improve public improvements over to the town. Steve, you want to comment? If I could just briefly. sure. Um, this is an old subdivision off of dedication. It's been posted for a long time, and now they're getting around to actually coming through with the offer of dedication, and, and they want to post their maintenance security. Uh, I'm sure as the board recalls, um, one of the last local laws that we adopted um, abolished um, bonds as acceptable security 
all the accepted now, uh, at least under that particular section, subdivision section in, in, in the code, um, is um, uh, letters of credit and, and cash. However, there is a section in the code that discusses road specifications. And in the road specification section, it lists the various forms of maintenance security which can be posted. This is just for roads in general, not necessarily roads in a subdivision, you understand. But it would also be applicable to a road in a subdivision. And among the forms of security that they list is bonds. Mm -hmm. So this applicant came to us and said, um, gee, you know, we're, we're older. I, mean, I know we aren't grandfathered per se by the law that you've recently adopted, but take a look at this. The road specification section says that you accept bonds as maintenance security. And what's more, according to this developer, um, he would have a very hard time coming up with a letter of credit. Take that for what it's worth. Anyway, um, I said that I would approach the board tonight and ask if you'd be willing to accept a bond uh, instead of a letter of credit as maintenance security, as an exception in this case, because it's an older subdivision, the, the offer of dedication's been on file for a long time, and because of the anomaly that we now have this discrepancy in the code. Um, I'd suggest, regardless of what your decision is, that at the workshop in December, we could present a, a local law to amend the section on road specifications to make maintenance security consistent with performance security under the, um, the subdivision provisions in the code. But tonight, I'd like to, it's all right with the board in adopting this resolution, have authority to accept a, a bond as opposed to a letter of credit. I think this subdivision goes back Probably oh, about 13, 14 yeah. years yeah. since it, when they started work. The subdivision actually goes back earlier. So, uh, I mean, it doesn't put us in any worse position than we've been in the past. We, we've worked with the bonds before, so board members don't have any objection. I think, you know, I'll read the resolution. Whereas ADC Orange, Inc. received subdivision approval from the Cornwall Planning Board on certain property known as Winding Brook, Whereas ADC Orange, Inc. has offered to dedicate certain roads in the above subdivision to the town of Cornwall. Whereas in order for the town to accept the dedication, ADC must provide the town with maintenance security in the amount of $128,805 set by the town's consulting engineer, proof of payment of inspection fees in the amount of $55,906, title insurance policy in favor of the town in the amount of $35,000, and original signed deeds accompanied by TP. 584 and RP 5217 forms and <clears throat> now therefore be resolved as follows. Town of Cornwall agrees to accept the proposed roads for dedication upon receipt of the following. Maintenance security and form approved by the town attorney in the amount of $128,805. Proof of payment $55,906 inspection fees. Policy of title insurance in favor of the town in the amount of $35,000. In the original signed deed with TP 584 and RP 5217 forms. Is there a motion on the resolution? So moved. Second. Second. Discussion? So they be bought, the, the, the proof of payment, that's already paid, the 55906, correct? Yeah, it's already paid, but. So they're only bonding on the 164? I'm sorry? They're only bonding about 164,000? Yes, that's right. Yeah. Okay. That was the estimate. Okay. Roll call. Mr. Russell? Yes. Mr. Biggins? Yes. Ms. Bunt? Yes. Mr. Summerfield? Yes. Mr. Randanza? Yes. Motion is carried. Next item is the above ground fuel storage tank. Carrie, if you want to just give a brief overview of that and <laughs> again. <laughs> this is the tank that was offered to us for one dollar uh, by the town of Highlands. It's in uh, excellent condition. We had our uh, consulting engineers, McGoey, Hauser, and Edsel, uh, inspect the tank and investigate it uh, and uh, look up the specification documents on the original tank and it was recommended uh, to the town that uh, we make a purchase for one dollar. It would not be used right away. We have an underground tank currently um, that has uh, separate requirements, separate in, uh, investigation and inspection requirements and record keeping uh, requirements and uh, this is something that for one dollar we can take and set it aside for now and eventually in the future replace that underground tank which we consider a liability with this tank so we've had discussions on it yes. 
think we're going to take it and put it up next to the sanitation garage. Is there a motion to uh, accept the tank from the town of Highlands for so one dollar? Was that moved by Carrie? Is there a second? Second. Second discussion? I forgot to mention the free delivery. And it's delivered. <laughs> <laughs> it's on the trailer. It's probably already down in the yard. <laughs> it needs a talent. <laughs> <laughs> Roll call. Mr. Russell? Yes. Mr. McGinnis? Yes. Ms. Bunt? Yes. Mr. Summerfield? Yes. Mr. Randazza? Yes. Motion is carried. Next item is intermunicipal agreement on dog services. The town has been uh, contracting with the town of Woodbury for uh, housing dogs that are uh, picked up <coughs> in the town. We generally run between 12 and 18 dogs uh, in the course of a year. Um, really, based on their new proposal, the, the cost has escalated dramatically and basically they, they really don't want to continue the contract. So the town clerk has indicated she's checking with the uh, neighboring municipalities to uh, see what alternative uh, uh, arrangements we can make for handling the dogs. And I don't know if you have an update. No, that. nothing yet. I'm still waiting on their board's decision. When is, the, when is their contract over? When? The, the end of the year. The end of December. So yeah. hopefully we'll have something in place by January 1st. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we'll just keep updated on that. Next is just the board to authorize sending a letter to PERMA, our workers' comp carrier. Just uh, a right of non-review, non-renew. Uh, you have to send this letter, I believe it's at least 30 days prior to the end of the policy in the event that we decide not to renew with PERMA so that we wouldn't be subject to any, uh, any charges on it. So is there a motion to authorize sending a letter? So moved. Second? Second. Discussion? Roll call. Mr. Russell? Yes. Mr. McGinnis? Yes. Ms. Bund? Yes. Mr. Summerfield? Yes. Mr. Ryan Pesley? Yes. Motion is carried. Next is on a uh, assessment uh, proceeding. Our attorney, uh, Hacker Murphy, has recommended the board uh, accept a settlement that they have reached on Hesari versus the town of Cornwall. I'll read the resolution. Whereas the town of Cornwall, New York, and its successor have engaged in litigation with Farsid Hassari and Sabe Hassari over claimed excessive assessments on parcel 34-2-38 situated within the town. Whereas the town of Cornwall has relied upon the services of E. Stewart Jones Hacker Murphy, Kathy Drobny of counsel to assist in the defense of contested assessment proceedings and subject parcel. Whereas the settlement proposal has been recommended to the town board for adoption, which in the view of its outside attorneys and valuation consultant is a fair and equitable assessment and will save the town further costs of litigation and uncertainty of a decision after trial. Whereas a draft document of settlement for submission to the court has been prepared and therefore be resolved that Kathy Drobny Esquire is authorized to enter into a formal assessment agreement between the town of Cornwall and the Hisaris agreeing to the following assessment changes for the parcel indicated for the years 2014, 2015. 2014, the assessed value was $953,429. Revised assessment is $782,800. 2015, the assessed value, $913,750. The revised assessment, $782,800. Be further resolved that Kathy Drive the Esquire is authorized by the town board to take all steps ne necessary to effectuate this negotiated settlement, being determined by the board that said settlement is fair and equitable, and that said settlement will also save the town substantial attorney's fees, expert costs, and court costs. Is there a motion on the resolution? So moved. Moved. Is there a second? Second. Discussion? Roll call. <coughs> Mr. Russell? Uh, yes. Mr. Beginnis? Yes. Ms. Bunt? Yes. Mr. Summerfield? Yes. Mr. Randazza? Yes. The motion is carried. Next, I have a letter from the Village of Harriman. Dear Supervisor Randazza, as per our previous conversation, the Village Board of Trustees has agreed to sell a 1995 <coughs> international dump truck with plow. They provide the VIN number, approximately 19,000 miles and 2,000 engine hours. The Board is willing to accept $20,000 for this vehicle. It's authorized Village Attorney Darwin to provide necessary paperwork. Sincerely, Stephen Well, uh, Mayor. I'll read the resolution. Whereas the Village of Harriman is the owner of surplus 1995 international dump truck with plow. Whereas the Village of Harriman is offered to sell said dump truck with plow to Town of Cornwall with title free and clear of any encumbrances or liens for a total of $20,000 in an as-is condition with no warranties 
and whereas the town of Cornwall wishes to purchase said dump truck with plow from the village of Harriman for $20,000 as is, with no warranty so long as the village of Harriman can provide the town of Cornwall proof of, free, of clear title. And therefore be resolved as follows, the town board authorizes the highway superintendent to proceed with the purchase of the above vehicle and authorize the supervisor to execute any and all documents necessary to complete the purchase. And just to note, um, the truck is uh, nearly 20 years old, but it's in good condition. We've had our mechanics look at it, and this is a truck that probably would, to buy new, would be about $150,000. So I think the board has discussed it and with the highway superintendent, and for $20,000, if we can get at least five years of service out of the truck, then it's, it's beneficial to the taxpayers. So Low mileage, and it has been continuously garaged. Yes. And it, it has. It's in, it's in good condition. Only driven on Sundays. <laughs> <laughs> Probably true. All right. Is there a motion on the resolution? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Discussion? Roll call? Mr. Russell? Yes. Mr. McGinnis? Yes. Ms. Bunt? Yes. Mr. Summerfield? Yes. Mr. Randazzo? Yes. And with that, I have a, uh, a budget adjustment to adjust the 2016 budget for the purchase of the highway truck as follows. Increase DA 5,000 highway unexpended fund balance, uh, $20,000, and increase DA 5130.2 equipment, $20,000. Basically taking the money from unappropriated funds and appropriate into the 2016 budget so that we can pay for the truck. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Is there a second? Second. second. Discussion? Roll call. Mr. Russell? Yes. Mr. McGinnis? Yes. Ms. Bunn? Yes. Mr. Summerfield? Yes. Mr. Randazzo? Yes. The motion is carried. I have a letter from the uh, village of Cornwall and Hudson. Uh, basically, as each year the village uh, writes to the town and uh, requests that the uh, town board exempt real property taxes on village owned water supply properties. Uh, this would be for the year 2017. I have a resolution whereas the town board of town of Cornwall has received a request from the village board of Cornwall, village of Cornwall and Hudson to grant tax exemption from 20, this is 18 taxes, to certain properties owned by the village in the town outside of the incorporated village. And whereas the town has considered the request from the village and I therefore be resolved as follows, that the town does hereby adopt this resolution denying the request of the village to exempt certain properties in the town outside the village which said properties are used by the village for water supply purposes. Is there a motion on the uh, resolution? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Discussion? This is an annual request. Yes. Right. The only thing I'd note, Dick, is although their letter did say 2018. It is 2018. Request, it but is 2018? Well, it would be, they're looking for, but that's it would be next year, which would be for the 2018 budget. Oh, okay. I thought they were for. I know. I thought the same thing when I read the letter. But now looking at it, if we approved it or now, it would actually affect the 2018 bond. Denying the request. Be the next tax roll, which I've heard is. 2018. Okay. We'll move to discuss. Seconded. Roll call. Mr. Russell. Yes. Mr. McGinnis. Yes. Ms. Bond. Yes. Mr. Summerfield. Yes. Mr. Randazzo. Yes. Motion is carried. Firthcliffe Heights Water District, the hydrant camo, who helps maintain the Firthcliffe Heights Water District. Um, we have a hydrant that's not working, and they did obtain parts and are making repairs to the uh, hydrant. But in the event that the uh, repairs aren't successful, just need the board to approve uh, spending $6,500 for a replacement of the hydrant. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Your second? Second. second. Question. Discussion. So they, said they were able to get parts. They were. They finally, they couldn't find the parts because the hydrant's probably 50 years old but they were able to locate the parts, so they're gonna try and repair it. And if the repair works, then we won't have to pay the 6,500. Move the second roll call. Mr. Russell? Yes. Mr. McGinnis? Yes. Ms. Bunt? Yes. Mr. Summerfield? Yes. Mr. Randazzo? Yes, motion is carried. Next item, I have a letter from the attorney. Dear board members, Secretary of State has advised that local law four, five, six, and seven of the year 2016 were filed in the Secretary's office on October 11th 2016 and are now in effect. So we note that for the record. Next is a resolution from Shabbat of Eastern Orange County regarding the uh, menorah. Whereas the town board of Town of Kwan has received a request from Rabbi 
Zabransky of Shabbat of Eastern Orange County, under the auspices of the Shabbat of, Middle, of Mid Hudson Valley, placed a six foot, to eight foot menorah on the town hall park grounds for the festival of Hanukkah. Whereas Rabbi Sobransky is further requesting the use of Munger Cottage on Tuesday, December 27, 2016, at 6 o'clock p.m. for Hanukkah celebration for the community. Whereas the town board has considered the request from Rabbi Sobransky, therefore be resolved as follows. The town board is hereby grant the request of Rabbi Sobransky of the Shabbat of Eastern Orange County to place a six to eight foot menorah on the town hall park grounds. A specific location to be approved by the town supervisor, superintendent of buildings and grounds for a period of time between December 1st, 2016 and January 2nd, 2017, subject to the following. One, a statement of the date the display will be erected and the day will be removed and execute a hold harmless agreement waiver and proof that Shabbat of Eastern Orange County has liability insurance covering activities and erecting the proposed display and naming the town of Cornwall as an additional insured. Be a further resolved, the town board is hereby grant the request of the Shabbat of Eastern Orange County use Munger Cottage on Tuesday, December 27th 2016 at 6 o'clock p.m. for Hanukkah celebration for the community. So, motion on the resolution? So moved. So second? Second. Discussion? Can I ask a question? Sure. The, um, the request for the use of Munger Cottage, is that something that normally comes before the board? <clears throat> I think because it's in the resolution to put the menorah in, mm -hmm. we included that in it. Normally, Munger Cottage is scheduled through the town clerk's office. But it, this one has always been <clears throat> scheduled to combine together yeah. with the menorah request. It's just mm -hmm. part of the made it part of the resolution. Mm -hmm. Roll call. Mr. Russell? Yes. Mr. McGinnis? Yes. Ms. Bunt? Yes. Mr. Summerfield? Yes. Mr. Randazzo? Yes. The motion is carried. We have the uh, relevy of water from the uh, village of Cornwall Hudson for properties outside the village and also for the Kirkcliffe Heights Water District. I'll read the resolution. Whereas the town board has been presented with a list of unpaid water charges in the amount of $163,385.48, one owed by properties outside the village of Cornwall and Hudson receiving water from the village of Cornwall and Hudson, and two owed by properties in the Firthcliffe Heights Water District. Whereas it's been requested that the town board adopt a resolution forwarding the list of property owners together with the unpaid charges to the County of Orange, requesting the same be relevied on the 2017 general tax bill being understood that when a town of Cornwall receives the taxes, including the unpaid water charges, the town will remit, then remit the unpaid water charges to the appropriate entity. And therefore, it be resolved as follows. That after due consideration of the above request, the town board does hereby adopt this resolution agreeing to forward the list of unpaid water charges listed by property owner to the County of Orange together with the request of the force, force said unpaid water charges in the amount of $163,385.48 be re relevied against the listed properties that the same appear on the 20. 16 general tax bill, should be 17. Right? And the 2017 general tax bill. Mm. Is there a motion on the resolution? So moved. Second. Moved, second, discussion, roll call. Mr. Russell? Yes. Mr. McGinnis? Yes. Ms. Bunt? Yes. Mr. Summerfield? Yes. Mr. Randazzo? Yes, motion is carried. <coughs> and now that our uh, most recent local laws have been uh, approved by the board and filed in Albany. We had held off earlier this year of updating uh, our code with general code. Uh, so now we have everything current, up to date, all the local laws. And uh, they estimate that it will cost 3, between $3,210 and $3,405, uh, which includes shipping and handling of six sets of supplemental pages. Mm -hmm. Is there a motion to approve general codes uh, updating of the code book? So moved. Second. second discussion roll call mr russell yes mr mcginn yes Ms. bunt yes mr summerfield yes mr randazzo yes the motion is carried and i have a proposal from central hudson uh, we had talked about having a light installed over at the end of rings pond on little ridley road where it intersects with uh, munger road and the library just to brighten up the area it's very dark and there's a lot of activity and while I met with the Central Hudson rep we also looked at a pole a little further up on the road to Munger where there's a slight curve to put the light there and also with the pole rental and uh, their proposal is for uh, 1360 for the one light per month 2348 for the second light and 509 for the utility pole 
Is there a motion to approve the installation of the lights and pole? Question. Okay. Yes. You don't buy those poles? No, you rent. You pay a monthly. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sort the property poles you purchased. I guess over the years it's just, okay. you know. Roll call? Pardon? Second. You made a second, Michael? No, now I did. Mm -hmm. Now he did. You're good. <laughs> okay, Mr. Russell? Yes. Mr. McGinnis? Yes. Ms. Bunt? Yes. Mr. Summerfield? Yes. Mr. Randazzo? Yes. The motion is carried. Next time I just want to uh, update uh, the board discussed uh, last week. The uh, proposal to uh, look at uh, constructing a building for the uh, to house a historic um, memorabilia of, of the town uh, in a separate building on town hall grounds. Uh, the architect uh, working with McGowan Hauser and Etzel did come up with a, uh, a ballpark estimate of approximately two hundred eighty-three thousand dollars for a prefab building, which includes a building complete with the uh, foundation and the uh, access to the entrances um, for the building and of course the town would do a small parking area with a few parking spaces as well as just connecting utilities and while that's an estimate from the engineer I mean the consensus is that if the board ever gets to the point where we're going to proceed with it we would go out for competitive bidding and we would hope that we would certainly see a, uh, a reduced amount in the cost of the building. Um, th this is something that uh, came up in the summer it's uh, a project that I believe in, in discussing it with a number of people in the community would be a great uh, improvement and asset to the community in terms of having a location where all of our history of the town can be displayed and visitors from a tourism standpoint and also sharing a, a, t a visitor location there. Um, it's not going to happen overnight and it's going to take time. We would look at fundraising alternatives. I did look at a uh, federal grant that uh, was available but in really uh, looking at the grant following up just with only a couple weeks to submit it, it's uh, not enough time to put together a thorough grant for, uh, for on a federal level. Um, but we'll keep looking for other opportunities. In addition, the, uh, as we had proposed, this, uh, the Library uh, Board of Trustees have uh, approached the board and uh, expressed interest in uh, possibly housing the uh, Historical Society artifacts. Um, I just want to emphasize this is not a competition between the town and the library. Uh, our goal is to have a location other than one room in the town hall, which most people don't know about, where community members and visitors and tourists can actually go and see some really nice displays uh, in an adequate facility. Uh, so at this point, what I would say is that um, I think the paper put it well that uh, the Historical Society now has two options that they can consider. Pursuing, um, I think we will look to the Historical Society to uh, provide the board with information as to whether they, you know, would prefer to look at the library option or prefer to uh, look at a separate building. Um, and I think once we hear from them, they want to go with the library, that's perfectly fine. Uh, it's one less project the town has to take on. Uh, if they decide that they would rather see a building uh, of their own, that they could be a destination uh, for them, then we will continue to pursue it on the town side. So I think at this point, um, I will be talking to the Historical Society, ask them to please make a decision on which way they would go. In the end, and I know this based on discussions, if it doesn't work out in the library and it doesn't work out in a separate building for the town, they will remain on the, the second floor and continue what they've been doing for the past probably 15 years. So uh, these are just options. It, it would be something that would be a, uh, really a great uh, asset for the community. So I think uh, hopefully we'll hear within the next month or so from the Historical Society you know, what their preference might be. And then we'll pursue that, that course one way or the other. So I just want to update the board on that. Uh, the Pilgrim Pipeline. I had written a letter to Governor Cuomo three weeks ago uh, asking the governor to attend a, a town hall forum. Uh, to talk to uh, elected officials and also uh, members of the community. They're very concerned about the proposed Pilgrim pipe Pipeline that's uh, being looked at to be run along the uh, throughway right-of-way. Uh, in the letter I received, I wrote uh, several of the towns and villages uh, around Cornwall, the supervisor mayors 
have joined us in uh, requesting the governor come down to uh, provide information to the communities. And uh, when I spoke to uh, the governor's office today, uh, I spoke to someone in their scheduling department. They have the letter and the information. They said it's out for review. And as soon as there's any further information, they will get back to me. So uh, I want to remain hopeful and optimistic that the governor will come down and visit us in the Hudson Valley and talk to us about this project that has many, many people concerned uh, for the safety of our community and our environment. So I'll keep the board updated on that. In the interim, what I'd like to do is ask our attorney to seek through FOIL or any other means um, any kind of a contract that currently exists between Pilgrim Pipeline, uh, New York State Thruway, or the state of New York. Um, and my thinking is if someone owns a piece of property and a developer wants to develop that property but doesn't want to take title to it until they get all their clearances, generally there's some sort of a contract or agreement that says, you know, you will allow me to go through this process and in the end, if it's doable and acceptable, these are the terms of the agreement. So I have to believe somewhere in Albany there's a document that says that if this project ever goes through, X amount of dollars will come to the Thruway Authority or the State of New York, and these are the terms and conditions of the sale. I think it's vital for us to understand um, what the terms of that contract really are and uh, exactly how much money is involved and where that money would go to find out what's behind this whole proposal. Besides the fact that Pilgrim, wants, Pilgrim is a private company wants to make money transporting uh, crude oil uh, through our communities, we also so should understand what the other side of the deal is and what the people of the state of New York or the 3A authority are going to receive. Um, so if the board's in agreement, I'd like to ask the attorney, and I can't imagine it would invest a lot of time, but I think tracking down any agreements that exist, Steve, would be very beneficial and good information <coughs> for the board to, to have before them. Okay? Do you need a motion? I don't think so. We just, uh, Steve will make the contact and report back to the board. Okay, next item is just uh, to note that we have a, a donation of $318 from Shelly Ann Keys in honor of her deceased father, Fred Howard, who many of us know or knew over the years. Made a donation of $318 for new seat cushions for the metal chairs at Munger Cottage for the benefit of our senior citizens. So we thank her for that contribution. Under personnel, I just have one request from Karen for the uh, basketball staff uh, approve the following, the 2016-17 boys basketball season, refereeing, bookkeeping, et cetera, at $10 per hour. Uh, Mike Anderson, Greg Geddes, Tyler Rickey, and Joseph Sardon. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Move, second. Discussion? Roll call. Mr. Russell? Yes. Ms. McGinnis? Yes. Ms. Bunt? Yes. Mr. Summerfield? Yes. Mr. Randazza? Yes. Motion is carried. Committee reports. Councilwoman Bunt? Um, the Senior Advisory Committee has been meeting um, regularly. Uh, they've, been, they've got posters out. They're trying to you know, solicit ideas and participation from our seniors um, for what they would like to see happen. Uh, as yet, they haven't had too much um, activity or response in that, but they are aggressively meeting. I guess they're going to not meet for a couple weeks now, but they are you know, working very hard. Um, COVAC had 50 calls. Uh, we are still working on the contract. Uh, we're getting closer, so that should happen soon. And I have to apologize, but I don't have the building report. Okay, so uh, permits issued were 17, CC 16, CO 5. Uh, there was no demolition permits, no blasting, on-site inspection 66. Two complaints were investigated, um, 12 fire inspections, four signs were removed, uh, $5,194 received in permit fees, and $2,700 in municipal searches. And that's pretty much it. Okay. Councilman Summerfield? <coughs> Thank you. I 
I was uh, I was a little late to the CCAC meeting. Um, they did have discussions about the Superfund delisting, uh, majestic weaving, and I think they're bringing to your attention the discrepancy uh, between describing it as uh, industrial use only versus residential use. Um, uh, more discussion on the on the Pilgrim pipeline. big issue in Cornwall is the uh, discovery of PFOS um, poisoning in the uh, Lake Washington in uh, in Newburgh. Uh, PFOC has been linked to cancer, thyroid problems, and other serious health issues. Uh, it was detected in Lake Washington in Newburgh's drinking water at a level of 170 parts per trillion, which is well below the 400 points per trillion level uh, that was recommended by the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency, but the EPA changed the level of uh, recommended level, sorry, the recommended level to a new level of 70 points per uh, trillion, and that's when the city declared an emergency and shifted to a new water source. So I uh, just wanted to remind everyone that if you're interested in doing blood testing, um, it's, it's uh, recommended or it's, it's being made available to anyone who works or goes to school in Newburgh and uh, potentially has uh, exposure to using uh, their drinking water extensively. Did you receive anything back from um, the tests that were being done? Um, uh, or no, I haven't. Uh, after I spoke to the state health department, uh, they, kind of, they were continuing their tests. But also just to emphasize that Cornwall does not get its drinking water from Washington Lake. Right. Just want to emphasize that, so it doesn't serve any of uh, our residents as far as the public drinking water. But if you live and work, and right. if you live and work, if you work in Newburgh or go to school there, and you feel you want to get a blood test, uh, your last opportunity is Saturday, November nineteenth. Okay. Anything further? On? Um, Time Warner Cable, uh, as they're shifting over to Charter Communications, are making a lot of changes on their channels. Um, in addition, they're also changing their fee structure. I'll try and get all this posted on the, uh, on the town website. It, there's, there are a lot of changes. Uh, generally speaking, for consumers, uh, all of the fees are being reduced uh, fairly significantly um, by 20 to 50% on average. So. Um, with the exception of the late fee, which is eight ninety five now instead of eight fifty, um, this this looks like it's a, a win for consumers. Surprisingly enough, um, Dick, when you uh, when you made a presentation for the EDAC to uh, the Chamber of Commerce, you had mentioned that the, the polls uh, in downtown aren't going to be uh, changed over until spring next year. So I looked into it a little bit, just because so many people, you know, talk about removing the wires downtown. Uh, when I was at a, um, a seminar last year on municipal lighting, I made a connection with a person at uh, Central Hudson who uh, discusses uh, or, or works with municipalities in uh, removing or realigning uh, wires and poles and so forth. So I got in contact with them. Uh, as liaison for the wiring cable. Anyway, so um, he did a, a, an initial analysis uh, looking not at burying the lines but moving the lines behind the buildings. It's a big deal. Uh, a lot of people would like to think that it's an easy solution, but it requires 40 to 50 easements uh, that the town would have to undertake with all the individual private owners. Um, phone and cable relocations to the new pole lines. He took a look at the actual uh, route of the wires currently look behind the buildings and said, generally speaking, it, it would be a real challenge, but it could be done. And if we're interested, uh, he, at no expense, would um, create a, a document that, well, along with the designer, that would give us a, a ballpark estimate of what it might look like. So I'll pass that information on. Yeah. I mean, I, in addition to that, there would be cost 
to every property owner to right. regroup their electric. Approximately right. 50 uh, individual relocations of those power sources. But it wouldn't be as bad as if it was underground. Underground is really expensive. Moving it from the front of the building to the back of the building isn't quite so bad. And then there's all these other uh, potential um, hybrid kind of solutions where you know it may be above ground for, with uh, less wires uh, and behind the buildings for you know some sections to reduce the actual uh, visibility of the wires. But at least you know they have somebody that's dedicated uh, at Central Hudson to having these discussions with municipalities at boundary time. Uh, so whether we move forward with it or not, at least we'll have the right information and we'll know the expenses and um, I mean, we've had those discussions over the years and I mean anybody wants to have input on it, we'll welcome it. Uh, of course on Main Street, you know, put it behind the buildings on one side, it still serves the other side as well. So yeah, he's it, it's not, split it. There's, yeah, not it's, an easy it's not, it, believe me, it's not an easy mm -hmm. easy solution, but any information you want to provide, Michael, we'll certainly welcome. Uh, police department for October 2016. There were 655 calls for service. There were 26 motor vehicle accidents reported. 38 alarms. That's a combination of residential and business. 20 ambulance requests. 17 animal complaints. Uh, 17 disabled. They responded to 17 disabled vehicles. They performed three house checks and 18 assists of other agencies. They have only. Statistical report, there's nothing else to report to the police department. As far as uh, sewer for Firth Cliff, uh, routine maintenance was performed and, and uh, routine activities, and then all <coughs> measured parameters were within permit limits. And also for Shore Road, uh, as well, maintenance and uh, normal activities, and then all measured uh, parameters were within permit limits for the month. And as far as recreation, they reported two events. Now, P-I-Y-L, that's Pilates Yoga, correct me if I'm wrong. All right, there we go. Pilates Yoga, uh, Tuesdays and Thursdays from 9.15 a.m. to 10.15 a.m., $35 for five classes and $70 for 10 classes, and there's no classes on November 15th, 17th, 22nd, or the 24th. And tomorrow, this is not a lot of time, but there's a Sands uh, Casino trip, which is Tuesday, November 15th, the party town hall at 8.15 a.m., and returning at 6.45 p.m., that's $34 per person, includes $30 in slot money, $5 food vouchers. Now, the registration period has already passed for that, but if somebody was interested, and I guess reached out first thing in the morning, it's a gamble. But. <laughs> 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 it's a gamble. That's all I have to <laughs> uh, The highway department was busy this past month. They installed drip route drainage and ditches on Peville Road, catch basin cleaning and repairs townwide, installed the repaired signs townwide, uh, string trimming and roadside mowing town and country, sweep, uh, sweeper was out daily, uh, patch uh, crews out townwide, brush trimming, Long Hill Road, Clarkwood Drive, Dayton and Ryan Court, various other locations, helped town pool concrete and exaction to check pipes, with the right term, exaction. Uh, repairs to sidewalks to eliminate trip hazard, various locations, culvert pipe replacement was replaced. Uh, grind driveway ends, uh, Quaker Mill to finish blacktop work. Uh, repaired small washout on Boulevard with riprap and worked on Seasonal Road, Long Hill Road, used millings to fill in ruts and potholes, rolled and repair. Uh, worked on installation of plows and sanders for the winter help sanitation department and made repairs to trucks and equipment. Um, the assessor's office uh, has completed all of the data collection and entry. Uh, the uh, reassessment uh, effort is now in the hands of our consultant, Tyler, Tyler Technologies, who is working with the county and the state. And it is anticipated that everything will be on uh, Budget and, and time, time, time. Um, that's all I have other than the uh, comprehensive plan committee is anticipated to start work uh, just after the first of the year, and it is anticipated that it will take uh, a good portion of next year to complete the update. Uh, we are talking to people 
now to be on the prospective committee and it will be uh, people will be notified later on who will be uh, on the committee once it starts and that's all I have. I just want to mention on, on the uh, power lines too along with that of course I've been working with Central Hudson on the pole replacements but beyond that which has always been a challenge is um, early this year we had passed the uh, double utility pole local law so we started working with uh, Verizon and uh, Time Warner Cable because once Central Hudson puts in the new pole and they run their wires at the very top then normally what happens is the cable company comes in has to move their wire off of the old pole <coughs> And then Verizon can come in, move their wires off of the pole, and then Verizon generally removes the old pole. I'm happy to report that it really made some real progress uh, in working with uh, Time Warner Cable and um, Verizon. Um, the police department went around earlier this year and identified over 50 uh, locations where there were double utility poles. And uh, having caught up with uh, a good contact with um, Time Warner Cable, um, they have indicated that they pretty much completed their transfer on these poles off of the double pole onto the regular pole. Uh, and I forwarded that list again to Verizon. So what we're hoping is that uh, Verizon can now come in and transfer their uh, wires over and actually get rid of these double poles. Um, some of them have been up for years mm -hmm. and years. <coughs> so I, I think uh, there seems to be a real movement in, in the part of utilities to really upgrade the utility lines and all and uh, so we're going to keep working with them and uh, if nothing else happens on Main Street next year Central Hudson has said they are going to come in and replace uh, the poles on Main Street and at the same time when Verizon switches over we're going to work with them and see if they can't eliminate some of the uh, unnecessary lines that they have and just aesthetically try to make some improvement uh, in that area on Main yeah, Street. just cleaning up those <coughs> lines that mm -hmm. aren't, even, aren't being yeah. used by anybody. And there's a lot of them. It's the old, really the old style. Really makes it messy. And okay. straight poles. And straight yeah. poles. Yeah, we know more of the, <laughs> yeah. look at it you know, like every which way. But it, it would be an improvement uh, beyond what we have there. So we have warrant number 11. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Who's second? Discussion? Roll call? Mr. Russell? Yes. Mr. McGinnis? Yes. Ms. Bunt? Yes. Mr. Summerfield? Yes. And Mr. Rendazzo? Yes. Public comment? Anyone? Yes. Nancy. Uh, Nancy Bryan Quaker, everyone in this town. Um, I received, when my husband and I received our assessment data sheet, um, we were both quite concerned with the number of discrepancies that were on the sheet. Um, Mr. Andazzo, I do thank you for forwarding the email that I had sent. To, I must have Mr. Fiorentino's um, email wrong, and he did get it. I sat with him, um, and we, we had a very cordial discussion. Um, I don't understand why there were so many mistakes, and it concerns me for the town that, and I know I'm not the only one that had mistakes because there was a tremendous amount of chatter all over the place. Um, the, when I went in, he had the data cards out. Um, everything's in pencil, which is good. <laughs> uh, things were corrected, but um, my concern was is that he had plans for improvements that had been done on the property from probably 1990s from the previous owner to when we did um, an addition in 2006. And all of the information went from the building inspector's office to the assessor's office, and yet that information was not correct. Um, so we, we did correct that. Um, sadly, we'll get no second printout on corrections. We won't see that until the assessment roll um, comes out. But I truly hope that these corrections, not just for myself, but for everyone else, are reflected uh, correctly, because otherwise the town is just going to have a, a gigantic mess on their hands. Um, I just I don't understand some of the things that, that were wrong. And it's, it's a shame that there were so many um, errors on my sheet. Uh, on our two sheets because there's two separate parts not par it's one parcel but two separate structures on the property um, and the other thing that I'm going to investigate on my own because I still don't buy this although it was on his glossary uh, the fact that when you have uh, a private water supply but can hook into a public water supply your data sheet lists you as being on a public water supply mm -hmm. well unless the town is going to pay <laughs> however thousands of dollars I don't understand why it doesn't reflect the fact that we're on a private water supply. That, that just is the, the biggest um, confusing part of, of that whole thing. Um, so to, to indicate that someone is on, on, a, on a public supply when they're not is not correct 
um, description of the property. Um, for him to say, well, the difference in the in the bathrooms isn't going to affect your assessment. The fact that the cottage doesn't have a bedroom, although it was listed as, and now it's corrected to reflect just a loft and no bedroom, it's not going to affect your assessment. I, I'm hoping this assessment is good, and I hope everything's correct. But um, I just there's too many mistakes that came forth, and I'm not blaming one person or whatever, and I don't know why that happened, but I wanted to just bring that to your attention. No, oh, I thank you. And, and one of the things, Nancy, with the uh, nearly 5,000 properties that we have, and the data mailers went out, I mean, I'm happy to report that we've really got a, a significant number of data mailers returned back, and even while well, residents didn't have to, but we got back a ton of them that said that they didn't see any discrepancies, which is good. I mean, our goal, it's a mass appraisal process. It's not an individual appraisal process. So our goal in this whole process is to try to make sure that the data is as accurate as it can be so that when the commu computer modeling is done and assessments are generated in the spring, that, you know, it puts out a, a decent uh, role and that's reflective of the community. Karen? And I'd just like to note that we got some corrected data mailers back that went both ways. People came in with data mailers with uh, more to their property than were reflected in the data mailers that they got. You know, an additional bathroom or so so we're hopeful. Yeah. Anyone else? Okay. Uh, right. Yes. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Jeff. Uh, Mr. Sofield, could you tell us where do you get the blood test? And is it through Saturday or just Saturday? It's only on Saturday. They have specific dates. And if you want, I've got the, uh, the email address and phone number. It's the, the email address is easyboy, E O E, at health.ny.gov. And the phone number is up in Albany, 518 402 7950. Thank you. Okay. Anyone else? Okay. Entertain a motion to go into closed session to seek the advice of counsel. Is there a motion? Second. Moved. Seconded by Callan. Roll call. Mr. Russell? Yes. Mr. McGinnis? Yes. Ms. Buggs? Yes. Mr. Summerfield? Yes. Mr. Randazzle? Yes. Motion is carried. We will not be taking any action and I'd like to thank everyone for coming to the meeting and uh, wish everyone a happy and joyous Thanksgiving. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah.